Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here on Sash Factor live chat series, which is our special coverage of the Miss Universe pageant for this year. I am your host for tonight. My name is Noy Sabelano, and I'd like to welcome everyone from the Philippines and everyone around the world. Maraming maraming salamat for tuning in to our special, very special episode for tonight. And of course, since this is a very special episode, I'm going to be joined by our new host here on Sash Factor. So I'd like to welcome him as well. Let's all welcome Carl Capellan. Hello, Carl. What's up? What's Hello, up? everyone. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hello. Thank you for joining. It's me, Carl, once again. And we are welcoming you to another live session of Sash Factor live series. There you go. So, Carl, are you so excited for tonight's episode? How are you feeling of right now? <laughs> I am very much excited to, to what, what we have in store for, for our viewers tonight. It's not every day that we feature a very, very important person, not just a VIP, but a VVIP. And I feel you would agree that we are very fortunate to have this opportunity oh my gosh. To, to interview this esteemed guest of ours for tonight. And you got that right, Carl, because again, this is not every day that, that we get to um, have an opportunity to interview someone so important, someone who is supposed to be like a mover and shaker of the Miss Universe pageant. So to all of the fans, this is a once in a lifetime for us. And I think it's also once in a lifetime for you as well. So key in your comments and questions for tonight, because right now we're going to introduce, I'm so excited, I'm going to introduce our special guest for tonight ladies and gentlemen the miss universe crown maker the ceo and president of Sineria one companies this is our live interview with the one the only mr fred mawad sir fred good evening thank sir you fred. very much Lloyd. thank you Carl. there you go so sir fred again on behalf of Sash Factor, I would like to say thank you once again um, for this great opportunity to talk to you tonight. Um, first, we'd like to say, um, we'd like to ask, how are you right now? Where are you right now? What is uh, going on with life so far? So right now, I'm in Thailand. I'm specifically in Pattaya, where I've been for the last two weeks, trying to wait until the situation improves here in Thailand with COVID. Mm -hmm. The cases have increased, but we're always optimistic that the situation will improve. So we are just now being cautious, optimistic, and I'm certain that it's just a matter of time before Thailand once again controls the number of infections. And I also hope to see the vaccine come into the country very quickly to solve all the difficulties we're facing at this moment. There you go. So, so once again, sir, thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to talk to you right now. Carl, do you have anything to like to um to ask, like as a starter for tonight? Oh yes. Um, if you would allow me, I would like to ask uh, the first question for for Mr. For 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 Sir Fred. Um, Sir Fred, I mean, there are a lot of rumors g going on <laughs> with regard to Miss Universe 2020 having a new crown. So once and for all, we would like to ask you. Would there really be a new crown for Miss Universe 2020? So the answer is no, there's no new crown. It will remain the power of unity crown that Mala crafted. So the same as the 2019 crown. I'm just curious, why do you think the, uh, the rumors sparked? I mean, what do you think is the reason behind the rumors uh, about the uh, the new crown for, 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 for the Miss Universe 2020? Well, I think there's always an excitement about the unveiling a new crown, and maybe some people expected a new crown this year, so maybe that's where the rumors emerged from. But from our standpoint, we never planned on creating another crown. We have invested a considerable amount of time in crafting an extraordinary crown for 2019 the power of unity you've all seen it it has 1700 diamonds on it weighing a total of 190 carats it also has in the center a very important diamond the golden canary diamond weighing 62 carats so a lot of work has gone into crafting this crown and we want to make sure that we give it 
a chance to live mm -hmm. through the reverse journey for at least uh, a few years before we make any change from our side. And it makes exactly. perfect sense. I mean, for something that has been helmed very skillfully by your master craftsman, I mean, it, it would be a shame if it would be changing it um, right away. I think so. I think so. It took us about 50 different designs to refine it over time. And most people don't realize that this is a collaborative effort. It involves our own designers. It involves us as co-guardians, my brothers, Pascal and Alan. And we work very closely with Miss Universe in trying to craft this, uh, this crown. So just to agree on the design, on the concept, and coming up with a theme took several months and many, many iterations. So as you said it, it would be a pity to change it right away. I think it's a crown that has to live for a few years. And we're excited to find out who will be winning the crown in 2020. After you know There you go. So again, once again, that already clears the air. We don't have a new crown for this year's edition. Because I think, yes, as fresh as the crown itself is, of course, the partnership that you had, Sir Fred uh, Mawad, with Miss Universe Organization. Now, I'd like to ask about that. Um, how did that start? I mean, that partnership with the Miss Universe Organization, how did it happen for you and um, your, um, your group? So Mawad is known for being a jeweler for royalty. Uh, we were founded in 1890. I'm the fourth generation, so that's 136 years. So what we wanted to do is continue the legacy. So when my father handed over the business in 2010, which is 11 years ago, what we wanted to do is make sure that we really understood our heritage and try to take that heritage into the future. And at the time, we had a relationship that we started with Victoria's Secrets, creating the fantasy bra since 2001. We did this up to 2018. And as Victoria's Secrets decided to no longer create that fashion show and the fantasy bras, we thought of what could be next. And what was next actually became natural. We moved away from, uh, or we moved from bras to crowns, which really symbolizes what we stand for. So we very much like the association of creating the crown for Miss Universe because we like the message that Miss Universe carries, the message of empowering women, the message of celebrating intelligence, beauty, and being able to make a positive impact on the world. We believe that all the queens, all the pageant queens have, have a role. They're role models. They have competed. They have won in their countries. And they have influence over people. And if they use their voice to make the world better, then we are attracted not only to the fact that creating the crown, but also to the stories and to the messages that we can convey through our crowns in order to inspire people and make the world better. There you go. I mean, that is a really um, great way of putting it. I mean, just the mere fact that you saw that um, there was something about the story of the Miss Universe organization and how it actually connects with your own story as an organization. It's like a perfect match made in heaven, so to say. Now, I'd like to ask um, something about the crown, Sir Fred. Um, you already mentioned a few things about the power of Unity Crown, the Miss Universe Crown itself. Um, maybe is there anything you'd like to share to the fans right now, Sash Factor, something that we do not know about the making of the crown itself, like a fascinating story, like an interesting fact about the crown? Maybe it's time to share about that. Well, the fact that I like about, about the crown is that the shield cut, the golden canary diamond that's in the center, that 62 carat, was actually purchased in Botswana in the rough. And we, we cut it. We cut it in our own factory. And from that rough, we produced three diamonds. So you've got two pear shapes that are five carats that we put on the crown. And then you've got the 62 carat shield cut in the center. So what people may not know is that as a company, we procure rough diamonds and we, we cut them from the rough and then we design jewelry around these exceptional diamonds so when mm -hmm. we were commissioned to design the miss universe crown we looked at our inventory and we thought that this specific diamond would be a perfect match 
for me, what I thought would be perfect match was the shield cut. The shield cut, which is a unique cut, and having it in that size is also extremely rare. And I like it because it reminds us that we should shield the world from bias. That if we want a world where people are given equal opportunities and equal rights, and especially for women, for women to be treated equally, to have equal access to education, to have equal rights to jobs, promotions, then I think we have to keep that message at the forefront of our minds. We have to make sure that people are aware of it, not only aware of it, but they take action, they take action. So for me, the symbolic shape of the diamond and the entire design of the crown has a lot of meaning. And I hope that this meaning can continue spreading a message that encourages change in the world. Wow, that's a beautiful thing that you shared right now, Sir Fred, because um, many people do not realize that is that um, the crown itself is not only a symbolism of, you know, opulence and luxury. Um, the thing about the Miss Universe crown, it's really, a, it's really a symbolism for, you know, what women stand for nowadays. I mean, it's all yeah. about, you know, fighting for their rights, their equality, and um, the other things that the organization stands for. Right, Carl? Anything else you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I agree because, I mean, I find it amazing that a simple cut of a diamond, which is a shield cut, would send a very poignant message towards exactly. everybody with regard to, to women empowerment. I mean, and, and I also like the idea, you've mentioned, uh, Sir Fred, that the design evolved around the canary diamond and from which it sprung uh, the whole design process. Um, now that you've mentioned that, I, if, you, if, you, if, you don't, if you don't mind, Noy, I would transition to the next question. Um, exactly. pretty, uh, given the fact that you had to procure the diamond from, from Botswana, uh, could you tell us give, um, pretty much how much did it cost the, <laughs> the Miss Universe crown um, to, to produce? So what I can tell you is that the crown is valued at five million US dollars and that uh, this is the value that we put on it. It's a, it's a retail value. And that's the only number that we can actually uh, publish. How much it costs is obviously a very high number, but there's also a margin, a profit margin factored into the price that we're giving at $5 million. So in other words, our cost is less, but not by much. Of course, we un we understand because I mean, in the process of doing so, you also have to put your business acumen to it, and you also have to put yeah. consideration the 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 profit margin that that you okay. that you. Would There's a market with. value as well, so the market value would be five million dollars. Thank you, thank you for that. No, how about you? Would you like to yeah. transition? To Actually, this I'd, uh, I'd like to do a follow up on the crown itself because we are aware that you also sent like Tiara versions of the crown to the past Miss Universe um, winners. Um, maybe can you tell us the story behind that? Or well, why did you um, decide to send the crowns or the, the tiara versions to the past Miss Universe winners? So this was a request that was made directly by the Miss Universe organization. And I believe they did so because the crown does not go to the winner. So as you all know, the mm -hmm. Miss Universe crown, the Mala Miss Universe crown is, we're sponsors, we keep the crown. And therefore, maybe at the time, these winners did not receive anything. So Miss Universe has asked us to create these tiaras that they gave away to celebrate their win their winnings. Yeah, that's such, such a wonderful gesture made by the organization, right, Carl? Because, yes, um, they don't have any other um, token from, the win, uh, from their win during that year. I mean, that's a really beautiful... Um, um, gesture from the organization. Now, sir, I'd like to ask another question regarding, um, of course, your partnership with the Miss Universe organization. Um, how does it feel that you are um, ideally the partner of the organization for a second year in a row in terms of like being the crown sponsor? How does it feel for you? It's a responsibility. It's a privilege. It's an honor. We very much enjoy working with Miss Universe. The management team, Paula, has been wonderful. So we have a great relationship that's based on mm -hmm. respect, trust. And we want to do a lot more together. 
a lot more and specifically around around the messages that we want to convey to the world. So this is something that is maybe different compared to what was done previously. So for us, we view it as an opportunity to have a voice, an opportunity to potentially have some influence in making the pageant world better, but also using Miss Universe as a platform to touch more minds and hearts and encourage people to do good in the world. Exactly. And since you mentioned you um, about doing a lot more, I mean, doing more with organization, um, what is, um, do you have any plans or what are the future plans so far with the partnership that we have with the Miss Universe organization? Maybe you can reveal a little bit to the fans right now. You know, just to be clear, our relationship between Mawad and uh, Miss Universe is purely one based on sponsorship. So mm -hmm. we have no say in the judging. We have no say in how they run their organization. The only, the only influence we have is on the creation of the crown, and, and there's nothing else uh, that we can do from our side. But I think it, we take it upon ourselves to spread a message, spread a message and work closely with the Miss Universe organization in order to try to use that message, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to do good. And that's what we will continue doing. And that maybe leads me to the new venture that I'm sure you'll be asking me about, but it's about CI Talks, which is catalytic yeah. inspiration. And uh, so why was that created? That was created actually to amplify a little bit the purpose and the mission that we have as an organization. We created that company because we want to use the voice of celebrities and experts in order to provide inspiring content and messages that lead younger people to take action and grow. So we want to do good. It's a social enterprise and we want to use celebrities to influence younger people to be a better version of themselves. So this is all tied with what we're trying to do with this universe, trying to do with what um, with the purpose and mission of CI Talks as well. Yeah. Well, since um Carl, um since um, Sir Fred already mentioned about CI Talks, maybe this is the perfect opportunity to talk um, to talk about that because I have visited yes. the, the um the page. Um, I am really excited for this really great endeavor. Maybe you can talk a little bit about CI Talks and how did it start with the partnership with FASI? one of the most well-loved Miss Universe candidates um, in recent years. Maybe, um, what is this exciting um, endeavor, Sir Fred? So, I did meet Fasai back when she won in 2019. I was uh, impressed by her intelligence, by her willingness to want to make a positive impact. In fact, she had started, as you mentioned earlier, prior to the stock that she had started her own academy. So for me, in the back of my mind, I always wanted to start a social enterprise. And as a learner, as a person who continuously believes that uh, people can be better through learning, what I wanted to do is create a social enterprise that would disseminate messages that would enable people to grow. and. Fasai was definitely, as a co-founder, one of the key factors for me starting that venture because I felt that together we had a shared passion, a shared vision, and that by co-founding this organization, we could touch many minds and many hearts through our videos, through the celebrities that share their own insights about successes, failures, challenges that they've had, but we want to keep it real and genuine. So all the content is based on academic research, on scientific data, but then the celebrities bring their own stories to life. So they use their own examples in order to make a point and provide key take home value for anyone listening to the videos. There you go. And, yeah, maybe Carl, did Deca ask a question about CI Talks? Yeah. Um, I just would like to know, uh, Sir Fred, how is CI Talks uh, similar to, to TED Talks, perhaps? And mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the vision of, of CI Talks, let's say, in, in five years' time? Yeah. 
You know, I was describing uh, CI talks to someone and they said, oh, it sounds like masterclass meeting TED Talks. And I yeah. think that's probably, <laughs> that's probably a good way to look at that venture. We want to create videos that are a lot more cinematic, a lot more visual, a lot more entertaining. We want to combine education and entertainment. In TED Talks, you have experts that are providing great ideas and sharing them on a platform. But we want to do it in a very different way. And, and probably... In similar videos in the sense that our videos are all the way from five minutes to eight minutes. But uh, the difference is simply in the quality of the production. And you can take a look at some of the videos we produce. They've already been viewed by 1.5 million people, only four videos, and we launched them uh, in less than three months ago. So the potential is very high. We're very pleased with the initial results, and we're still at the very beginning of that journey. In the coming months, you'll see a lot more celebrities on the platform, actors, uh, skateboarders. Uh, we have uh, photographers. We have drag queens. We have celebrities from all walks of life sharing their craft, sharing their lessons with the purpose of inspiring young people to take action and grow. Yeah. And also, I um, I also watched one uh, one video with Fasai, and I think she was talking specifically about cyberbullying, and I think right. that was something that she was she was really passionate about. Um, are, are we going to expect um, more videos of this kind of of this nature about cyberbullying, about um, about issues in the internet or the so, uh, social media? Maybe you can tell us more about what can we expect um, in terms of content. So we're working very closely with universities in order to understand mm. what issues young people are facing. So when I say young, we're looking at a population between 18 to 34. And why are we targeting that population? It's because they're still young, they're either studying or they're early in their careers. And we believe they're the most receptive to wanting to learn and the most receptive to change based on the content that we provide. So we are in touch with all these universities and what we want to do is touch on topics that are of high relevance to today's society. So we're starting here in Thailand. We are planning on launching one video a week. I think we may be slowed down slightly because of COVID, but starting May and June, you will be expecting to see one video a week. And the next market we're looking at and we'll be announcing it soon is Indonesia. We will be also working with Indonesia. And the third, you'll be happy to hear that the third market will be the Philippines. Yay! But we are, here to, we, we, are yet to, we are yet to start our efforts there. So we're still developing, refining our business model, which is, by the way, going to be advertising based. We want to offer our videos for free. That's why mm -hmm. we're getting so much viewership and we want to try to find corporate sponsors to cover the cost of our operation that is exciting to hear so again to all of the fans um if there are fans from indonesia and of course the philippines i hope you are happy to hear that the ci talks they're going to have it in indonesia soon and then next in the philippines here so sir fred we are so excited to see you here soon in the philippines um in yeah. the future and now i just want to say something yeah, Carl. Sure, sure. You would know that we are talking to CEO because the manner of the way we're at, we just mentioned about C, I mean, CI and he's able to anticipate the fact that we're going to, to ask if he's going to, to expand to other countries <laughs> of, 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 of Thailand. So you know that you're talking to somebody who's a businessman and a CEO because of his foresight. You know what I mean? You know, I'm I just know. really in awe right now. No need for follow-up questions you. for that one, right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yes. Now, since you already talked about CI Talks and, of course, your partnership with FASI and the vision of like branching out in Indonesia and, of course, the Philippines, let's now um, digress a little bit to the Miss Universe crowns and the Miss Universe organization. Now, we also know that we have also um, created crowns for the different um, national um, competitions, specifically for Miss, U uh, Miss USA, okay, Miss Universe USA, and of course, Miss Universe Thailand. So what we're going to do is we're going to flash some of their, some of the crowns 
and we would like you to like tell a story or two about the crowns. All right. So, Sir Fred, let's talk about first this one. The first crown is, of course, the power of positivity, which is the Miss um, Universe uh, Miss USA crown. Um, maybe you can tell us a, a thing or two about this one. So the world can appear dark at times. People can mm. see gloom and doom. But to see the light, you need to have a positive attitude. And it's only with a positive attitude that we can dream. It's only with a positive attitude that we can garner our energy, our resources in order to make a change. So this is really why we came up with the power of positivity. And I think it's specifically relevant for our COVID situation. Only by thinking in a positive way, only by uniting, I think humanity has done an incredible job in coming up with a vaccine in a record time. So this is a perfect example of facing darkness, but yet having a positive attitude, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and being able to garner resources and make a change. So that's the message that we wanted to convey behind this crown. Yeah, that's a very beautiful message. Sure, Fred, because um, we noticed that the crowns have um, really inspiring titles. Or was it like an intentional, um, like, what really the intention of, the, of, of Mawad to really um, um, have the caption for the, the crowns with such beautiful, inspiring um, titles or, or names. Uh, what was the story behind that? Because power of posit positivity, power of unity. What was the story behind all of this? Yes, it's the same way we designed the crown. We also crafted the message that came along with the crown. So it's all intentional and it was all done from the outset. So this is not... This is not an accident that happened later. It's not a story that we added to the crown later, but it Great. was conceived at the beginning, at the beginning of the entire process. There right. you go. So what I hear, Sir Fred, is that, the, I mean, the, the name and the design is not really an afterthought. It's like, hey, we have this set design and we just want to make something out of it or to make it relevant. No, it's the other way around. There is a mission, there is a purpose, and that's where the idea of, of designing revolved around did we that get is it exactly correct? right that's exactly right yes okay thank you very much so it's intentional and it is crafted from the outset there you go so maybe let's move on um with the next crown the second crown of course is the miss teen usa power of hope now what is the story behind this one sir now picture all the young people at university, at schools that have been homeschooled, that have not been able to see their friends, not being able to go to school. Many of them are probably losing hope. Many of them are probably seeing the world in a very different eye. So we want to remind people that no one can take hope away from you and that you need hope in order to be able to dream, in order to be able to make put put yourself apply apply yourself towards your goals so it's really a message to remind all young people that although we're facing challenges in today's world never lose hope because hope is a beacon a beacon for you to keep on moving forward it is a reminder that you have to keep on learning you have to keep on growing because there's hope beyond any challenge we're facing short term beautiful message as well for the Misting USA crown and of course the third crown that you designed is the Miss Universe Thailand power of authenticity there you go a beautiful crown as well so what is now the story behind this this crown well I think with social media today a lot of young people are put under pressure to conform to maybe stick to what is perceived as being ideal but the world is not ideal we're all unique and it's very important to live a life that is in accordance with our own values and not try to fit another role because we think it is better so this is just a reminder for young people to understand themselves to accept themselves and to deal with other people 
with respect, but not try to be someone else. Because if you try to be someone else, you will struggle, you will not be authentic, and you will not be happy. So happiness comes from first accepting yourself, understanding yourself, and surrounding yourself with people that understand you, that understand you, and just focus on building positive relationships with the people around you, and that's how you live happily. So that's the message we wanted to convey. Yes, and I also know that the the, the crown itself and the message of the crown is also very um, much connected with the tagline of the Miss Universe Thailand um, competition for this year about real you, like real, real you, real Miss Universe Thailand. So which is a very great, you know, connection between the crown, the winner, and the organization, right, Carl? Um, do you have any um, insights on that? I agree. Um, it is. It amazes me. I mean, upon listening, I mean, as it settles, as I'm able to digest the, the story behind the crowns and and the designs, it. I had an epiphany that, I mean, as a company, I mean, the I feel that the Maui group of companies is not just using the partnership just to showcase their designs and just showcase, hey, I'm a jeweler. No, um, you're taking the company is taking full advantage of the partnership to spread positivity, to spread, uh, I mean your ideals in in the process of doing so crafting the best jewelries that, that you can offer to the, the miss universe winners and the other winners of of the pageants under the miss universe organization so i'm just really amazed on, on the design process and realizing that this is this is not really an afterthought i mean it it, exactly. it really revolves around a core value if i may say so and 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 that's probably the reason why it's it's very cohesive the way you're discussing things to us and explaining how things came came together. No, thank you, Carl. I think I think you have put it uh, well together. It is a representation of our own values. It's an opportunity for us. So we view it as a platform, and everything that we've done was intentional, was planned. Even the real you, the power of authenticity. This is again as a result of collaboration with the Miss Universe Thailand organizers. Kun Pui, she's a very, very kind, but a visionary as well. So we had a lot of discussions and created that theme collectively together. And that's why it's very cohesive. There you go. So thank you so much, Sir Fred. Yeah, for, for sharing that um, story about the crowns and for the, the different um, messages they um, intend to convey. Now, Carl, before we move on to our next part of the interview, maybe it's time to um, take a look at the comments section because there might be some fans who would yes. like to ask their questions or any shout-outs. Um, yeah, Carl, yeah, take it away. Yeah, let's let's read. Andy, would, would we have any, any shout-out or any questions that we have? Um, I'm sorry, I'm viewing this from, from my... From my my mobile phone, I'm, I don't have yeah, the, sure, the, sure. the web version, so I'm not. Oh, so from Big Tanayam team, we love Thailand and full support Mawai. So adi crap. Hello <laughs> Thailand. From Arisara Tari Tariwi, Philippines and Thailand. Oh, thank you so much. What else do we have? Yeah, once again to all of our fans, if you have any question or any you know shout out you'd like to like um have here during the show, feel free to key in in the comments section right now because now is the time for you to, you know, um show your love for our special guests for tonight. I understand that we have a lot of guests from, from Thailand, so I just wanna say Sawadi crap to con. Crap. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. it's staying, um, still from Arisa. Arisa. Yeah. From, would you like to read the next one, Noe? Yeah, so for, from Kim Trampe. God bless you, Sir Fred Mawad. Love from the Philippines. Maraming maraming salamat, Kim, for that special message. And maybe one last before we move on to the next part of our interview. Again, to all of our fans, um, do not be shy 
in placing your comments like Albert Shantaran. Thank you, Sir Fred, for sharing the story of the crowns. We are also very much um, thankful that Sir Fred shared the stories behind the crowns. And maraming maraming salamat for that comment right now, Alfred. So, Carl, maybe um, you'd like to um, start the, this part of the interview about the story behind the business and the family business, Carl, right? That's the next part of our interview. Yes. Thank you, Noy. Now is the portion of, of the, or the part rather, of the interviewer, and we would like to know more uh, of Sir Fred as a person as a, and a, as a businessman. So the first question would be, uh, Sir Fred, Mr. Mawad, rather, we understand that you are part of the fourth generation of the, the Mawad family. So, I mean, how does it feel to be to be the torchbearer of of the of the of the family's legacy, and how do you keep the legacy alive? It's uh, definitely a responsibility, but one that I've been prepared for since my young days, throughout my upbringing, my parents, my father. I've observed my father working hard. We've had a lot of conversations. So I learned a lot by, in fact, observing, asking questions. But I think I always knew deep in me and my brothers also felt the same that we were one day going to be responsible for the family business. Of course, in my younger days, I never knew that I would become an entrepreneur and that I would start several companies, never thought I would be in the businesses that I'm in today. So it's a journey that evolved but we always knew somehow that he would be responsible for the family legacy. And that happened in 2010. So my story is I started working with my father in 1990, worked with him for about three years. And at the time I found it quite difficult working in a family business. I had ambitions, I had dreams, I had my own view of how to manage organizations. I was always interested in management in general, in leadership, and as a result, I wanted to start my own ventures. So that's what happened. I left the family business and I started my ventures. And only in 2010, which is about 17 years later, 17 years later, that my father decided to retire and hand over the business to myself and my brothers. And that's when we decided that uh, that's when we took the helm of the organization. So. For me, it's a, it's a great responsibility, but it was also a challenge being an entrepreneur and having always been in charge of my own businesses. It was also a challenge of now co-managing a family business with my brother. So my father completely pulled out. In fact, he pulled out because he very much managed the organization on his own. And it was difficult for him to share responsibilities in the sense that he wanted to be the only commander on board. And as such, for us to come along with my brothers and find a way to work took us a while, but that's how we formed this concept of co-guardianship. We call ourselves co-guardians because we want to guard our heritage with the goal of passing it on to the next generation. The same way the business was passed from the third to the fourth, us as fourth generation, we want to also prepare the fifth generation and pass it on. So we understand that we're only there for a certain period of time and we have a responsibility to keep the business relevant and to modernize the business and make sure that it still adds value to our customers. And that's really at the core of what we do. We're close to our customers. We want to create value for them. That's why we started buying diamonds in the rough. So we cover the entire chain. We go from rough diamonds all the way to jewelry. And we do it to provide better value for our customers. We do it in order to be able to craft the extraordinary. So we've made some changes to the business. And our goal is to make sure that we are there to serve our customers no matter how the environment changes. Thank you. Thank you, Sir, sir Fred. I hear from you that um, the word co-guardianship. So what are your thoughts? I mean, as a CEO, I understand you cannot do things all at the same time. So at, the, at, at a certain point, you would have to delegate tasks. So with that in mind, what are your, or what are your thoughts with regard to 
task delegation? So I started um, over 10 different ventures um, in my career so far. And you can imagine if I was not able to delegate, it would have been impossible. So I believe, I believe that business is all about people, having the right people around the table, having the right people in every single position. And us as leaders, as owners, creating a platform, an environment that empowers people, an environment that puts the checks and balances in place, an environment where you as the owner, as a leader, work with your leadership team and the entire organization in creating the right culture, the right systems in place in order to deliver the best possible value to our customers. So I've used a model that I replicated in most of my ventures. And it's one that relies on hiring competent people, on challenging them, and working with them on having clarity in regards to what the vision and mission of the organizations are, and constantly reviewing it in order to better serve our customers. I see. I mean, I see that, that that's a lot of thing to, to to a lot of things to do. But I'm just curious. We're just curious to know. I mean, as a CEO, how is a, a typical day of a CEO like? I mean, is it way different from from us humble humans? <laughs> how does how, how is your typical day day like, Sir Fred? No, I am as human as you are, and as anyone else is. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's the reality. Well, I think that the difference is that I'm in a position like uh, other CEOs, a position of responsibility. So usually the problems get to us. We are responsible for many people. Our decisions carry a lot of weight. So I would say one is to always make yourself available. One would be to have a really good relationship with your management mm -hmm. team to learn how to trust, to learn how to work in an environment where people are respectful, where people are willing to share information because when you know what problems you're facing, then you can come up with solutions in order to address them. So it's really creating all these relationships. So my time, my time is about building these relationships and, and having these meetings. So there's no substitute for hard work. I do put a lot of uh, hours into work, you know, 14 hours. Although during this COVID period, I was able to shift from working 14 hours to also allocating two hours to exercising, which has really changed oh, wow. because I, I never really uh, placed any emphasis on physical activities, but COVID allowed me this year without traveling, allowed me to squeeze in some so cycling time, uh, some gym time, which I was not able to do prior. But the point I want to make is that uh, I plan my time ahead of time and I make sure that whatever I'm involved in, I am making an impact. I'm making an impact. I'm able to contribute. If I'm not able to contribute, then I prefer to disengage. So whenever I engage, I try to create value in that engagement. And that's really what allows me to plan ahead and keep on changing my plan as businesses change and evolve. Mm -hmm. I see. I understand. Uh, Noi, would you like to add to ask something yeah, from, sir. from Fred? Yeah, personally, I'd like to ask this question because I'm also training to be a financial advisor. All right. So, my question right now is what is the best money advice you can give to anyone right now? You know, the best way for me to answer that question would be to educate yourself. Uh, don't just trust people blindly. So if you need some financial advice, my advice would be start learning about finance. Start talking to people that are experts. So first step would be to learn, gather information. And as you gather information and talk to experts, then you can potentially work with someone you trust. But never, never trust blindly. Make sure that you understand the fundamentals make sure that you have your own point of view make sure that you understand the risks that are involved in any investment that you make and that's how you can make better decisions yeah, really good advice i like that thank you sir for that advice i hear the word i heard the word educate 
yourself mm-hmm. and that resonated to me sir mao and that and it helps us transition to your next to the next question rather because we understand that you went to harvard for your mba mm-hmm. and stanford when you dabbled with one of your companies so how important for you is constant in continuing education it's extremely important i think we never know enough the minute you believe that you know and you don't need to learn is the day you start going backwards. The world is changing rapidly. You need to keep that student mindset. You need to keep updated. You have to always consider that you don't have all the information. And as a result, you have to keep that drive of always wanting to learn more, understand more, look at it from different angles, surround yourself with people that will challenge you as well. So it's the entire process of saying, I don't have all the answers. I'm going to read about it. I'm going to talk to more people about it. And the more knowledge you can accumulate, the better your decisions will be. So continuous learning is critical if you are leading an organization or even if you're just doing a single job. The more you learn, the more you can advance. Thank you for imparting us with us the importance of, of um, your values. So I guess that will transition to our next question. What are your personal values that translated to your corporate values that are being shown? I mean, yeah, I guess that's a question. What are your personal values that have translated to your corporate values as well? So for me, fundamentally, respect is at the core. You want to respect the people. You want to respect yourself. You want to respect others. So in all my corporations, we put respect at the core. We also put customers, we're a customer-centric organization. We are there to serve a purpose and the purpose is to add value to our customers. So we never lose sight of our our customers. And that also is a reflection of my own core values. I try to make a positive impact on, on anyone that's around me, whether it's my colleagues, whether it's family members, whether it's friends, I try to be there. I try to be helpful and to be helpful you yourself need to to learn and so learning would be another core value we want to be a learning organization we never assume we have all the answers and therefore we want to constantly learn trust is essential without trust you cannot work as a team in fact when trust is broken that's when i end relationships with colleagues so if i can't trust someone then I can't really be working with them. So trust is at the core, respect, being customer centric, learning, and also being transparent, being transparent, which means you have to look at the facts, no matter how harsh they may be. If you're facing a challenge, you have to be able to describe that challenge. You have to be able to see it in order to be able to overcome it. You cannot just be blind to it, or you cannot look at it partially. I like looking at the facts. I like studying the world as it is. Only when you understand how it functions, can you come up with the right solutions. Thank you for sharing with us your your values and uh, how it serves as your true north towards your personal life and your your business uh, business enterprise as well. Um, Back to you, Noe. Yes, actually, Carl, I, I love that last message about building trust-based relationships and how it actually became the, you know, guiding light for Sir Fred to, you know, run the business and run his own life. Basically, it's all about building trust and you know, um, making sure that the trust is the guiding light towards everything that we do. Sir Fred, one last question before you move on to the um, fan questions uh, from Sash Factor. So we have talked about Miss Universe the organization CI Talks and how it is going to um, um, how, it's going, how it's going to thrive in Thailand and later on branch out in Indonesia and the Philippines and of course the other partnerships that you have in the future. Um, my question right now, Sir Fred, is what is the greatest hope for you right now for Mawat as an organization? Is there anything you'd like to like wish for the future of Mawad? Yes, if there's one thing I wish is to have the organization continue for many more generations. I'm the fourth 
I believe the success, my success and the one of my brothers will be determined by maybe the fifth or even sixth generation, maybe even seventh. So if the organization outlives us and if the organization continues to thrive and remain relevant and if our children, the next generation, are able to continue building up on our legacy, that's what I would define as success. There you go. Thank you so much, Sir Fred, for sharing that wish that you have for Mawad as an organization. Now is the time for us to look at the comment section if there are any questions to all of our fans. If you have any questions like this one from James Chu, James Chu. If ever you're going to be one of the judges, if ever, lang, sir, if ever, if, if ever you, um, in the future you get to judge the Miss Universe um, pageant, what will you be looking for in a Miss Universe? What I would be looking for in a Miss Universe is someone who is not only beautiful, intelligent, and charming, but somebody who has high moral values, somebody who really cares about making the world better by using their own voice mm -hmm. and by devoting their time and their resources to making good around the world. So it's someone who becomes an example for other young people and someone who can leave a legacy behind them through their own actions. So this is really what I would look for in that person. It's that inner beauty, outer beauty, and the drive and the passion of wanting to make the world better. Well, thank you so much for answering that. And thank you, James, too, for that question. We have, I think, one more, another question that was flashed a while ago um, about the tiaras and um, outgoing queens. Maybe we can flash that question right now. This is from Paul Sky um, Kawati. Hi and good evening, Mr. Mawad. I have a question. Will the outgoing title holders who won during the Mawad crown stint get to take home a replica or a special Mawad jewelry piece as a memento after they relinquish the crown? Thanks and I wish you all the best. So I I have to say. I'm not sure if they get a replica. Uh, I'm not sure what Miss Universe does. That's uh, unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> the answer. And uh, I do believe that they do get tiaras. That's part of the deal. So uh, each one of the winners will be getting a tiara from Mawad. So they will not get the main crown, but they will get tiaras. So that's the they, they will be getting something. There you go. go so back. again, just to make it clear, no replicas, but then tiaras definitely for the outgoing winners. Thank you so much for answering that one. Maybe we have uh, another question coming in or maybe just shout outs. Okay, this is another leadership or business question from Jofren Panagiton. Are leaders born or made? It's a really loaded question. So what is your answer for I this? Yeah, I also like this question. I like this question and I'm going to answer it simply. I think they are more born than made. And that simply means that you can make leaders, you can learn how to become a better leader, but if you're naturally born a leader, you can grow into leader much more easily and you will do it a lot more naturally. So you can learn, but if you're born a leader, you'll be a lot more effective and you'll do it much faster. There you go. Sounds like a Miss Universe question, right? Final question right there. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Fred. Maybe, um, Carl, we'd like to um, ask this next fan question. Oh, Sir Fred, will you will you be attending uh, the Miss Universe in Florida by any chance? So my brother Pascal will be attending. I will not be attending. My brother Pascal will be there. So, thank you. So the brothers, uh, the brother Pascal, is the one attending yes. instead of. Instead of Fred. Correct. Yes. So it's another co guardian. It's the same thing. We're three co guardians. As long as we have one co guardian representing the family, from our perspective, we're good. I just want to say this. I mean, I just, this is a pop, uh, pop uh, out of my head. I mean, if we have guardians of the galaxy, we have go co guardians of the universe <laughs> with, with the Mawad family. Exactly. And I exactly. Have, right? I mean, what do you think? 
the Justice League of the Miss Universe crown, so to say. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more oh. here. Carl, we'd like to ask this question. One more yeah. question, I think. Speaking about, uh, James Tew, thank you so much for your, for your questions. Uh, speaking about building relationships, what message can you give to all the fans around the world who fight each other instead of building relationships together out of passion? I love this question. This is a really great question. Love this. You know, I had the chance of witnessing all the contestants, uh, at least um, here in Thailand, compete. And I must tell you, I'm extremely impressed by the effort every single person puts into the competition. And I think all the fans understand it. It's not easy being seen by so many critical eyes. It's not easy performing under pressure. It's not easy just going through this entire journey. So I have a lot of admiration for every single contestant. Whether they win or not, they have the same level of admiration. And I think we should all respect that. We should respect every contestant, never fight, but celebrate. Celebrate their courage, celebrate the empowerment of women, and encourage every single one of these contestants. And, and be compassionate and never do anything that puts down anyone. And I think that's our role. If we love the world of beauty, it is our responsibility to respect it and encourage everyone that is playing on that field. Very good. Such a really Thank powerful you. message, really? yes. I, I, You know what, Carl? I hope a lot of the fans heard that message from Sir Fred. Because you know what, Sir Fred? Um, it's, it's a reality, most especially here in Southeast Asia. The pageant fans are so, are really staunch supporters of their, you know, of their, of the delegates. So I hope that instead of you know fighting one another, just support and like uh, build, uh, cultivate um, um, a, a culture of support for each other, right? Correct. Uh, yeah. No, we are a few minutes before the top of the hour. Uh, would you would you like to wrap uh, to wrap things up and oh, yes. uh, ask your final questions with 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 Sir Sir Mawai? Yes, actually, it's not really a question, but then for since we are ending the interview right now, Sir Fred, do you have any um last message to all of the fans um of Sash Factor and to all of the fans of Miss Universe? Um, now is the time for you to like maybe uh, do a special thanks um, to all of them and invite them to your future endeavors. So the floor is yours, Sir Fred. Well, first, I want to thank you, um, Noy and Carl, for interviewing me. I want to thank Bricks. I want to thank the entire team at Sash Factor. I know that your mission is aligned with ours. What you do is build a platform to inform fans, a platform that inspires people to respect one another and to really make Miss Universe a platform that is built on love, compassion, and doing good. And as long as we focus on the positives, I think together with all the fans, we can use the Miss Universe platform in order to carry messages of hope, carry messages of positivity, of unity, and anything that has a positive impact. So that's really what I wish we could all do together. Use this as a platform for good. There you go. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, the man of the hour, Mr. Fred Mawad. Thank you so much. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir Fred, for this interview. Um, before we officially end, do you have anything to promote? Uh, like, for example, um, you'd like to um, promote CI Talks. Where can they watch the videos, so to say? Yes, so citalks.com. So letter C I Talks, T A L K S.com. Please visit our website and subscribe to our newsletter so you'll get updated with any of our new releases. All videos can be watched for free. We'll have a lot of articles, infographics, and hopefully a lot of great content that you can benefit from. So please check out our website and sign up to our newsletter. There you go, there you have it. Carl, do you have anything to say before we officially end this wonderful interview with Sir Fred? I just wanna say, Sir Fred, I'm really, I really feel humbled and honored to have this chance to interview you. And thank you for choosing Sash Factor 
uh, for being the platform for us to interview you and to get to know you and uh, get the message across about uh, Miss Universe and uh, the Maui group of companies as a whole. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Appreciate it. And good luck. There you go. So Are once you know, again, once again, Sash Factor fans and Miss Universe fans, this has been our exclusive interview with Mr. Fred Mawad. And one final um, comment from Ed Gian Bartolome. Fred Mawad is so hot, <laughs> Sir Fred. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> there you go. Once again, to all of our Sash Factor fans and to all of the Miss Universe fans, Maraming maraming salamat. This has been Sash Factor Live Chat Series. Um, this has been your host, Noisa Belano, on behalf of Carl Capellan and all of the Sash Factor um, team members. We'd like to say thank you for tuning in to our exclusive interview with Mr. Fred Mawad. Please stay tuned to Sash Factor for our next upcoming Miss Universe content only here on Sash Factor. Maraming maraming salamat and have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Hasta luego. Nos vemos. Bye. Stay safe. Thank you, Sir Fred. Thank you so much.